Dear friends, I would like to share today with you uh, the idea that uh, there is no such thing as Deepak Chopra. I've been thinking about this for a long, long time. And as I grow older and look forward to the end of this story that's called Deepak Chopra, by most people, I um, have asked myself over the years, who or what is Deepak Chopra? And uh, to tell you the truth, I can't find such an entity. So let me share with you some basic ideas and see if you agree or not. So, of course, ever since I was a fertilized egg and then a zygote and an embryo, my body has been in a constant state of flux with atoms and molecules being replaced throughout this experience that we call life. And overall, it is felt that almost 98% of our bodies, uh, the atoms anyway, are replaced almost every year. Uh, this means uh, we are essentially building a new body at the atomic level year after year. And furthermore, water molecules turn even faster um, with the entire body's water content being replaced every two weeks. And 60 to 75 percent of our body is water. Our skin cells also have a very quick turnover every two to four weeks and then rates vary depending on the tissue. Cells in the body, the stomach lining are replaced every five days while bone cells take much longer. In any case, uh, the body is constantly recycling. Uh, you can say it's a recycling plant if anything so um, it's it, when you look at a whirlpool you see the water is recycling through the whirlpool although the whirlpool looks um, constant as an archetype but changes shape here and there so now go a little deeper and say what about my brain okay so the atoms in the brain are similarly changing, maybe longer uh, atoms in the brain and in, in every organ in the body are similarly changing. The atoms in the DNA are being constantly replaced through, replaced through a process called cell turnover. And while the DNA contains the instructions for building a body, including your body, my body, it's not a static uh, static structure. So approximately 2.06 multiplied by 10 to the power of 14 times is how the atoms in our DNA are replaced. That's a huge number, but it reflects the ongoing dynamic flux of our body. And so we are replacing uh, are the the atoms uh, in our body uh, innumerable times over a lifetime of 75 years plus that's about 4.88 multiplied by 10 to the power of 23 times that's nearly 500 quadrillion times that the dna has recycled at the atomic level so of course, we look at DNA and it represents uh, the information of uh, our entire evolutionary history. And it actually, in a way, remembers um, uh, all the experiences, metaphorically speaking, of all species as we evolved through mutations. And then there's epigenetics, which is not part of the DNA sequence, but uh, holds um, modifications, chemical modifications that are passed down 
uh, through generations, adding a, a another layer of complexity to what is happening in our body. So, and then you go deeper, you know, go deeper and you say uh, the atoms in the body and on all living things on earth, um, do they carry the echoes of cosmic history? And they do. So most of the hydrogen in our body, about 63% was forged in the very first moments of the universe during the Big Bang itself, according to the scientific model. Imagine the hydrogen fueling your muscles and brain activities. It was created 13.8 billion years ago. And then other light elements like helium also formed during this primeval event, the Big Bang. There are elements crucial for our life like carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and they didn't exist in the Big Bang soup. They were cooked inside stars through a process called stellar nucleosynthesis. And when these stars reached the end of their lives, they exploded in supernova, scattering these newly formed elements throughout the cosmos. These ejected elements eventually became part of interstellar dust, interstellar dust clouds from which our solar system and ultimately life on Earth uh, formed. The heavier elements, iron, etc., iron, calcium, phosphorus, uh, come from violent deaths of even larger stars known as hypernova. These elements are like cosmic fingerprints telling the story of stellar generations before even our sun existed. So every atom in our body carries a unique history. The hydrogen whispers uh, of the universe's infancy, the hydrogen is whispering. Um, the, as I said, the information of the universe's infancy and the carbon and oxygen sing of fiery stellar furnaces and the iron speaks of explosive stellar deaths. So when you look at the stars, you're literally made of stardust, stardust being with hopefully a little self-awareness. So that's the physical level. But then let's look at uh, our thoughts and they have been recycling and most of the thoughts are actually recycled everybody else's thoughts. There's hardly any original thought unless you know you have a breakthrough like uh, Einstein or the quantum pioneers or you're a genius like uh, Chopin or Beethoven. But uh, actually all thoughts uh, are recycled. You can't own a thought, nor can you own an emotion. And uh, you know, Every emotion you ever experienced is not yours. It belongs to the collective matrix of emotions. So molecules aren't personal. Thoughts aren't personal. Emotions are not personal. And hopefully uh, personalities are not uh, either unique, although they express themselves sometimes uniquely, but most of the time not. And personalities also evolve over time. You don't have the same personality as you had when you were a teenager or, you know, when you were a um, kid and personalities evolve. They don't get frozen unless you want to run for political office, then it's nice to freeze the personality at the level of an eight-year-old male. Bottom line, when I look for Deepak Chopra <clears throat> as a distinct ent entity, um, I can't find one. There's nothing, even as you're listening to me, what you're um, hearing are words, sounds, vibrations of the atmosphere that are gone before you hear them. And when you're perceiving me, that's a series of perceptual snapshots and every snapshot is different. So where in all this is this entity called Deepak Chopra? Can't be found. And so then that ultimately says, what is this entity called Deepak Chopra? The ultimate question. And it seems like 
it's the entire universe and nothing else. And in the background of all that is a non-changing awareness that is fluctuating as all this quantum particles, molecules, atoms, thoughts, feelings, emotions, imagination, personalities, just fluctuating in that only one non-changing screen of awareness. Uh, so that's the only identity, that which is projecting as the total universe, and this is a holographic, holo movement of that, seen as different from others, but actually the same, seen from a different point of view. Bottom line, Deepak Chopra is an authentic fake, authentic fake, um, let's say authentic deep fake, and my friend, so are you. So holding on to this authentic fake is the cause of all the problems in the world, from minor disturbances in relationships to violent relationships to war and terrorism, and ultimately the desecration of our planet, which we call the environment, but which is the extended body. Think about this and let me know, because realizing this actually is very liberating. There's nothing to defend, nothing to fight for. And um, actually, at that point, there is only peace. Nothing to defend, nothing to fight for, because all the fights are between authentic deep fakes.